what are outliers? Outliers can be described as a data point that differs significantly from the other observations. It could also be something that lies outside the overall pattern in distribution or an observation of data that does not fit to the rest of the data. So why there's a need for us to learn out, uh, to study about outliers? So outliers are data that somehow affects the measures of central tendency. So these are the ones that sometimes causes error to our statistical values. But how do we now determine the outliers? So to determine the outliers, we set up fences, the upper fence and the lower fence. The values that appears beyond the fences are the ones that to be called as outliers. So for us to set the upper fence, we need to have the value of the quartile 3 plus 1.5 times IQR. To have the lower fence, we need to have the value of quartile 1 minus 1.5 times IQR. So what is IQR? IQR simply means the interquartile range. And for us to obtain this, we need to have the quartile 3 minus the value of quartile 1. So it seems that we do have lots of things to have before we be able to find the outliers. So, for us to make it simple, for step-by-step -step process, so to find the outliers first, we compute for the value of quartile 1 and quartile 3. Those are the first two, two steps. Uh, the third step, we need to have the interquartile range. And the fourth and fifth step is to set up the fences. So, for us to understand this step-by-step -step process, so let us have this example. Find the outliers from the given set of data. So we have here 4, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, and 31. So our data are already arranged ascendingly. In case that they are not, we should be arranging them properly. So step 1 for us to find the outliers, in this case, we need to find the quartile 1 and quartile 3. Thus, we need to use this formula for the ungrouped data. So, quartile class is equal to k over 4 times n plus 1. So, the first one is we need to solve for quartile 1. So, therefore, here our k becomes 1. So, this becomes 1 as well. And our n, again, our n simply stay, uh, means the total number of data scores given. So, here we do have 7 scores on our data. So, therefore, this becomes 7. So, rewriting this clearly, so we will be simpli simplifying quartile 1 equals 1 fourth times 7 plus 1. So simplifying 7 plus 1, that gives us 8. And that 8 is to be multiplied to 1. 8 times 1 is 8. And the next thing, we divide that 8 by 4. So that gives us 2. And that 2 represents the position of the value of quartile 1. So second, and the second value from our data set is 14. Therefore, the measure of quartile 1 is said to be 14. So done with quartile 1. Next thing, we compute for the value of quartile 3. So, for us to do that, so this time we will be replacing our k by 3 because we are computing for quartile 3. And our n, since we are dealing with the same data, so it remains as 7. So, rewriting this clearly, so what we are to simplify is quartile 3 equals 3 over 4 times 7 plus 1. So, again, to further simplify this, we add 7 plus 1, that gives us 8 as well. And multiplying that 8 to 3. So, 8 times 3, that gives us 24, and that value is to be divided by 4, that gives us 6, and that 6 represents the position, it is the 6th value on our data set, and, our, and on our data set, the 6th value is 20. Therefore, the value of, or the measure of quartile 3 is 20. So, these are the first two, two steps. The next step is to determine the interquartile range, or the IQR. So, we just simply need to find the difference. Quartile 3 and quartile 1. So IQR is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So based on our first two steps, quartile 3 is 20. Our quartile 1 is 14. So subtracting these two values, so 20 minus 14, therefore our interquartile range is 6. So after this step 3, step 4 and step 5 is we set up now fences. So let us start dealing or having the upper fence. So to get the upper fence or to set up the upper fence, we need the value of the quartile 3. So in our computation, our quartile 3 is 20 plus 1.5 of IQR. Our IQR based on our computation is 6. So the next thing, we multiply now the 6 to 1.5 and this gives us 9. Then adding 9 to 20, therefore our upper fence appears 
has the 29th number. So, the 29 is something in between of 20 and 31. So, therefore, our upper pens will be placed here. Next thing, after having the upper pens, next thing, we set up the lower fence. So, we're in, we need the value of quartile 1. And our quartile 1's value is 14 minus 1.5 times IQR, which is 6. So, next thing, we multiply now that 6 to 1.5. And that gives us 9 as well. Then subtracting that 9 to 14. So therefore, our lower pens is 5. And that 5 based on our set of data is in between a 4 and 14. So we may place our lower pens in between these two. So upon looking at our set of data, the numbers that appear uh, outside or beyond our fences are the numbers 4 and 31. So therefore, we may now conclude that the outliers from the given set of data are the numbers 4 and 31. Let's have another one. Find the outliers from the given set of data. This time we do have 3, 23, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26, 50, 63. So we might be thinking that we, we can just simply guess what the outliers are. We can be correct to our guesses, but there will be times that we might have a wrong answer. So for us to be certain, let us have the step-by-step -step process. So, first step is to compute for the quartiles, specifically quartile 1 and quartile 3. So, we are to use this formula. So, for quartile 1, therefore, our k becomes 1. And our n, so again, n represents the number of data. Now, the number of data that we do have here is 9. So, our n is 9. So, rewriting it clearly. So, we do have quartile 1 equals 1 fourth times 9 plus 1. Simplifying 9 plus 1, that gives us 10. Then, multiplying that 10 to 1, that gives us 10. Then, 10 divided by 4. So, this won't give us an exact location. So, 10, point, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. And that 2.5 is something that appears between these two values. The second value and the third value. So, since we don't have an exact value or an exact location, so we need to... Use again the so-called interpolation to interpolate. It is the lower boundary, uh, rather the lower value plus the decimal value, then times the difference of the involved value. So I just simply use acronyms for this one. So our lower value is 23, though they are the same numbers, plus the decimal value that we do have here is 0.5 or 0 0.5. Then the difference between the two involved values, the two involved values are the numbers 23 and 23, so subtracting these two. So, rewriting it clearly, so we will have now quartile 1 equals 23 plus 0 0.5 times 23 minus 23. So, subtracting 23 and 23, that will give us 0. Then next, that 0 is to be multiplied to 0 0.5. That will also give us 0. Then 23 plus 0, therefore we conclude that quartile 1 is 23. Uh, take note and remember that whenever that you're going to interpolate uh, values in between of two the same values, uh, you may no longer need to really interpolate. So just, just simply use uh, the numbers, the, the same numbers that you are in. So let us have now the next one. So done with quartile 1. Next thing is we look for the quartile 3. So this time, we change now our k into 3. Because we are computing for quartile 3. And our n here is 9 again because the number of scores given or data that was given is 9. So, rewriting it clearly. So, we have 3 over 4 times 9 plus 1. Again, we simplify 9 plus 1. That gives us 10. And that 10 is to be multiplied to 3. So, 10 times 3, that gives us 30. Then, 30 divided by 4. Again, this will not give us ex uh, exact value. It is 7.5 or 7.5. And this value is in between of 26 and 50. So, since we don't have an exact location, we need to have the so-called interpolation again. So, to interpolate, it is just only the lower value plus the decimal value times the difference of the involved value. So, this time, the involved values are the numbers 26 and 50. So, we use the smaller value. We do have 26 plus the decimal value, which is 0 0.5 times the difference of the involved value. So, we are dealing with the numbers 50 and 26, subtracting these two. So, to write it clearly, so what we do have is 26 plus 0 
times 50 minus 26. So, subtracting 50 and 26, this will give us 24. And that 24 is to be multiplied to 0 0.5. That will give us 12. Then, 26 plus 12. So, our quartile 3 is 38. Again, these are just only the first two steps. So, the third step is to look for the IQR or the interquartile range. So, to get the IQR, we just simply subtract these two values. So, the quartile 3 minus the quartile 1. Quartile 3 is 38. Quartile 1 is 23. So, subtracting these two values, so this will give us that IQR is 15. Done with the third step. Fourth step, we set up now fences, point and pit. So, let us first having the upper fence. It is quartile 3 plus 1.5 of IQR. So, quartile 3 on our data now is 38 based on what we got. Then, plus 1.5 of IQR. So, uh, this time our IQR is 15. So, to write it clearly, so we do have now 38 plus 1.5 times 15. So, of course, we are to multiply this 15 to 1.5 to further simplify. And this will give us 22.5, adding these two values. Therefore, the location on our our upper fence is 60.5. So, that is something in between of 50 and 63 on our data set. So, it appears in between of these two. So, there is our upper fence. So, let us now set for our lower fence. It is quartile 1 minus 1.5 of IQR. So, our quartile 1 based on our value that we got on our first computation is 23. Then, minus 1.5 of IQR, which is 15. Then, the next thing is we multiply this 15 to 1.5. So, that gives us 22.5 as well. Then, subtracting 23 by 22.5, therefore, our lower fence is 0 0.5. So, upon looking on our data set, 0 0.5 is something before the number 3. So, it appears here. So, upon looking on our data on our fences, so the value that appears outside is just only the number 63. So, we may now conclude that the outlier from the given set of data is just 63. So, these are the steps, the five steps in determining the outliers from a given set of data. So, hope you understand this topic is all about. So, thank you for watching. So, you hope... Hope you learn how to determine the outliers. Thank you.